The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. For most of us... Is there any more alluring form of minor masochism than the good old-fashioned ghost story? The icy fingers running shivering shocks up and down the spine, playing that fascinating dichotomy of, this might have been me, but, oh, thank the Lord it wasn't. So this ghost story begins with Joel and Jane Trent, early 20s, married eight months, Starting out in life with a future unlimited, except the present unfortunate necessity of counting every penny to make life work and to live in some dignity and comfort. And then, the fabulous break, or what seems a fabulous break, that marvelous ad in the classified section of the Sunday Chronicle. Joel, I found us a home. Are you listening? All ears. Eminently desirable, two bedrooms and bath for the right couple. Fully furnished sublet for at least two years. Please not before 10 a.m. Sunday, H.S.M. Apollyon, 27 Southwest 62nd Street. So? So what? That's right off Central Park. It'd cost a fortune. I saved the best for the last. Rent, 200 a month. One month security. Oh, there's got to be something wrong with it. Why? It's too cheap. Well, does that mean we can't look at it? No, we'll be there on the dot, fighting the line. What have we got to lose? What indeed. And don't be afraid of a crowd. Yours is the only paper this ad will appear in. Because it's you I want. One advantage of being a rather special... Printer's Devil. Our mystery drama, The Real Printer's Devil, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Paul Hecht and Jada Rowland. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and... New sugar-free diet, 7-Up. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Could there be a more mundane, run-of-the-mill beginning to a really haunting ghost story than two young people on the way early on a bright Saturday morning to answer an ad for a sublet furnished apartment? But such an apartment. From their point of view, a steal at the price, at the location, containing everything they ever wanted. A long-term lease, a promise of heaven. But from another point of view, oh, well, that, as we shall see, is the hell of it. <laughs> the rooms will be small. So, how big are we? It'll be crawling with cockroaches. My best friend's uncle's cousin is an exterminator. It did say two bedrooms, didn't it? That's what it said. The second one is probably just a walk-in closet. So, I'll build a fresh air duct to it. A crib doesn't take all that much floor space. Oh, hold it. What's the matter? The baby didn't... No, do... the baby didn't do anything. It's me. Oh, the way my tummy's revolving, it's lucky there aren't three of us here already instead of two. I'm scared. Of What? Look, 62nd Street. This is the corner. Supposing it really smells. Supposing the price was a misprint. Supposing the John's out in the hall. <gasps> Suppose someone got there first and took it. No way, no way. It isn't even 10 a.m. yet. And... Oh, never mind. Let's get going. What was the number? 15, 17? Uh, uh, 27. There it is, on the other side of the street. Oh, it's an attractive building. Yeah. Hey, there's a nice little garden around the main door. And it looks so well kept up. Oh, Joel, it just seems too good to be true. Well, come on. Let's find his bell. Ah, here it is. H.S.M. Apollyon. That's our fairy godfather. Don't call him that. I don't care how gay he is. The apartment's all I care about. Press the bell. Okay. 
Be ready when he buzzes down. Yeah. Oh, why doesn't he answer? Maybe he's in that john down the hall. Oh, you... Uh, enter, my love. Oh, I love the carpet. Bittersweet. I hope nothing I said hurt his feelings. Well, the elevator's waiting. Let's get it over with before I faint. I have a few butterflies myself. Got the floor number? Yeah. And we are off. Everything's so clean and efficient. Well taken care of. You sure it wasn't East 62nd? No, look, here, 27 West. I hope it's not too high up. What floor is it? Oh, forget it, darling. That's for later. <clears throat> well, here we are. Uh-huh. Ah, I thought I heard the lift. Uh, uh, my Anglican background, or I should say English elevator, I meant, of course. Are you here to see the flat? Uh, apartment, I mean, naturally. Uh, yeah, yeah, we are. Uh, I, I'm Joel Trent. Uh, this is my wife, Jane. H.S.M. Apollyon here. And won't you come in? You know, everyone always thinks I must be retired Navy or something. Uh, H.M.S., you know. His Majesty's ship, whatever. <laughs> Only it isn't. It's H.S.M. Stands for something quite different, I assure you. And besides, I'm not one for water at all. Can't abide it. <laughs> well, this is the vestibule or the foyer or perhaps the hall, you'd call it. As you can see, it's very much like any other of its kind. Oh, not at all, Mr. Pollyon. It's... It's absolutely fabulous. Oh, well, not exactly, but how nice of you to say so. One does do quite a bit of traveling, and some of the things you see, particularly those from the East, are quite, uh, well, I won't say fabulous, unique, perhaps. Now, that Chris, for example, would you believe that it has both perfume and poison forged into the steel of its blade? And the sorcerer's cane, well, that's real hair, you know, the handle. Now, which would you like to do first? A cup of tea and get acquainted and then do the flat or the other way around? Oh, if, if you don't mind, I'm just dying to see the apartment. I mean, the flat. <laughs> then off we go. Oh, Oh, no. Uh, and by the by, before we do start, only because once before I did have quite a disappointment after showing a, a rather peculiar individual the apartment some 19 years ago, this man went all the way through the apartment. He was uh, some sort of a minister, as I remember. And after deciding to take it, he changed his mind when he learned the number of the flat. You did notice it, didn't you? Joel knows it. I don't. What is it, Joel? It's uh, apartment D. On the 13th floor. Oh. Well, that's, that's just a silly superstition, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. Well, now, shall we, uh, shall we have a look about? Uh, do you take sugar with your tea, Mrs. Trent? One lump, please. But really... Mr. Trent, uh, or would you prefer something stronger? No, no, tea's just great. Uh, two. Uh, lumps, I mean. Uh, but how about milk, Mrs. Trent? No, thanks. Neither of us. But really, Mr. Polly, and this is awfully kind of you, but we must be holding you up. I'm sure there'll be loads of other people in answer to your ad. Well, they're not here yet, so we can enjoy our tea, eh? <laughs> Besides, my dear, I have a sneaking suspicion that... Uh, oh, your cup, oh, Mr. Trent. Thank you. That not so many people are going to turn up in answer to the ad. For a dream apartment like this, I can't believe it. I was surprised there wasn't a line a mile long. <laughs> well, how nice both of you are. You know, I've, I've really taken quite a fancy to you. That's very sweet of you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. It's so difficult today to find young people with all the good old-fashioned uh, virtues. <laughs> what am I saying? It's been very difficult for generations. So for my purpose, you, uh, you're you quite ideal. I, I, I don't quite understand. Oh, I thought I'd made myself quite clear. You're just the people I want in my apartment. That is, of course, if you're interested. And if there's anything I can do to make it more attractive to you, Attractive? I'm... Well, the whole place is just a dream. It's the sort of place Joel and I made up dreams about living in after saving everything we could make for the next 10 or 20 years. And now to think that 
At a price we can afford, we can start living that way right now. I... Oh, dear me. Now, I didn't mean to upset her. <laughs> no, she's only crying because she's so happy, you see. you got to excuse her. It says in the book that women in her condition sort of... T- uh-oh. Oh, Joe. Oh, I just slipped out, Jane. I... Women in... Uh... We just thought we'd have trouble finding something we could afford, and we, and we wanted to have plenty of time. Matt Gertrude's place in Mount Vernon just doesn't have room for all of us now, you, let alone... Why, you're going to have a baby. <laughs> well, now, isn't that nice? My congratulations. <laughs> it's a sort of a bonus, in a way. You mean you don't mind babies? Mind? I love them, just adore them. You you can't know how much extra pleasure they afford. Oh, gee, that's great. Uh, what did you mean, a sort of bonus? Oh, that. Uh, Why, uh, to think of being able to use the crib and the baby bath and all those things I once bought for a tenant and his wife and baby who were unfortunately lost in a plane crash on the very day they were to move in. (gasps) How awful. Yes, snatched away from me at the last moment. Oh, I, I don't mean that the way it sounds. You see, I'd grown almost as fond of them as I... Have a few. <laughs> now, we must get down to business. I'll um, have the bed taken out of the small bedroom and set up the crib for you. And uh, when could you move in? Why, the sooner the better. At your convenience, of course. Oh, if I told you my convenience, my dears, I'm sure I would shock you. <laughs> Try me. Well, today. This minute. This afternoon. If at all possible, not later than six o'clock. You shocked me. I know the ads had immediate occupancy, but I wasn't quite well, expecting Let me soon. explain. I had a tenant, you see, a most interesting man, a sort of a, a Billy Sunday, you might say. Fascinating challenge. Challenge? Oh, well, I shouldn't admit it, but I feel I know you both so well, even after the short acquaintance. Do you know I've traveled a great deal, and I've never been able to resist the inordinately evil things that men have dreamed up as the centuries went rolling by. The grimoires, the the devices of the Inquisition, our own New Englanders. Uh, Well, I bought all sorts of quite horrible things. Pictures, instruments, statues, charms, and so forth. I keep them all hidden away in that big closet at the end of the hall. Oh, that's the only thing that's off limits, by the way. I keep it locked. Oh, that would be perfectly all right. There's plenty of other closet space. And you wouldn't be interested in this awful stuff anyway. (laughs) As I said, this man was a minister, so I, um... I thought I'd really give him a start. So, I replaced everything and hung up all this perfectly awful stuff. Oh, quite bone-chilling and terribly evil. But why? Well, I wanted to see his reaction, so I thought I'd scare him off. And naturally, you did. Good gracious, no, he loved it. (laughs) Couldn't wait to move in. (laughs) But someone greater than us solved the problem... Unfortunately, he was taken from us with uh, a heart attack. Oh, the poor man. Yes, actually, he never realized how fortunate he was. Oh, but I, I didn't mean to depress you. Let's get back to all the fun and practical things. Now, I have some urgent business in the Near East, and I've uh, booked an overnight plane for tonight. If I could possibly make that... Joel, there's no reason why not, is there? Uh, You have the money. Yeah. And we have the time to run up to Mount Vernon and back and get enough clothes to settle in. Then we could bring the rest later. Well, I I, I guess it might be arranged. Uh, Um, oh, by the way, what business are you in, Mr. Apollyon? Oh, that's, uh... A little difficult to explain. Uh, Rather like the import and export business. Oh, you deal in objet d'art? In a sense, yes, but perhaps a better word would be subjects. But to get back to our business, if you have the rent and the security with you, we'll exchange them for the keys and sign the leases, give you a thorough briefing on the entire apartment, and then I can be off just as soon as you return. Uh, Oh, well, Mr. Joel... Oh... Forgive me, but at my age, I think I can take the liberty to use your first name. I'm a rich old man with no children, and money is no object to me. Now, if the rent is too high... $200 a month for a two-bedroom apartment furnished like a palace? 
Why, it... Hush, 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 hush. Now it's all I want from the right people. Besides, um... <coughs> uh, there is one little catch to the whole thing. Oh, dear, I hope it won't prove too much of a problem. Oh, catch? Yes, I, I'm afraid so. Are you by any chance afraid of cats, Jane? Cats? No, I love them. So does Joe. In fact, we've been thinking of getting one. Oh, well, now that is a relief. You have one. And such a cat. Pure Abyssinian and the delight of my life. He's the only reason I must always find just the right tenants. Can we meet him? Uh, he, he might not like us. Oh, have no fear about that. Smokey, uh, that's his name, Smokey, he loves everyone. Well, where is he? I'm dying to see him. At the moment, he's at Le Chasseron, being attended with loving care by Pierre and Christophe, so he will look his very best for his new conquests. Conquests? You, my dear. Oh, I promise you he will win your heart and soul when you meet him on your return. Well, what do you think? Oh, darling, it's marvelous. Just what we need. Yeah, and just what we can afford. You won't have to go tiptoeing around Aunt Gertrude's every night. We both won't have to take a subway and a bus for 45 minutes to get to work every day. We could even walk. Jane, Jane, darling, the whole wide world's our oyster. Don't you agree? Yes. Yeah, but something is bothering you. Oh, I know it's silly. It's just that... That 13. Oh. Why couldn't it have been 12 or 14 or any other number? Now, you're not going to let something silly like that bother you. You know how superstitious I am. I just have such a funny feeling. Maybe it's the number made it so cheap. Maybe we ought to be grateful. I sure hope we're going to be. I guess we're in it now. Jane, you and me just made the damnest deal in the world. If only Joel could know how prophetic those words are. If only all of us were a little less gullible, the devil might have a long, hard task that could even discourage him. And if only he'd just take the people who are going his way. Why is he driven to tempt and maneuver and triumph by winning the others by artifice and indirection? Is it because he was once an angel? And when Lucifer fell, in his own shame, he must drag the rest of the world into the pit with him? I'll return in a moment with Act Two. Warm night in Chicago, 79 degrees right now at Midway Airport, getting up to 93 for the day Thursday. In the fourth period of play, 22 to 22, Jacksonville and the Chicago Fire are tied up. in her chair, the bright hook flashing as she crocheted away at another rug. Aunt Gertrude found it hard to share completely in Joel and Jane's bubbling enthusiasm. Two reasons. One, she knew how large a gaping hole they would leave in her lonely life. And two, Aunt Gertrude was a pragmatist. You say only 200 a month for that apartment. Where shall I put my baseball spikes? Oh, Lord, do we have to take those? What did you say, Aunt Gertrude? Well, I just can't get over the price. It's it's a giveaway. I know. But we do have to take care of the cat. Oh, my, my. Such a chore. Open a can twice a day. Don't forget the litter pan. Now, don't change the subject. Tell me, what's wrong with the apartment, I wonder? There's something fishy. And you had Bob Anderson go over the lease with a fine-tooth comb. And he's a real estate lawyer. Oh, I'm quite satisfied with all the legal aspects. It's just... I don't know, something else gives me a funny twinge in the left shoulder blade. Used to be a kind of storm warning. Well, now I guess it's just arthritis. Don't worry about us, Andy. And don't... Please don't have any doubts. Why, have you been having some... For the love of Mike, would you chew Cassandra's? Would you lay off? Here we have the break of a century. Oh, and... you're, you're quite right, Joel. I... I guess I'm getting so old that the milk of human kindness is beginning to sour. Now, I, I I feel just like both of you. It's just 
was just too good to be true. And to be practical, it does solve all our problems. There really isn't room for the three of us in this tiny apartment of mine, and when the baby comes... Like the clowns climbing into the midget car. Oh, yeah, well, uh, I'm going to miss not being part of bringing up that baby, though. Oh, you'll have plenty of chance. I'm going to leave that bed in baby's room as well as the crib. Besides, there's a huge couch in the living room. There's the cab. Oh, brother, are we all packed? Yes. Well, I, I guess this is it. I'll take the heavy suitcase out first. Oh, it's going to seem strange with only one instead of three. At least we're not changing numbers. Hmm? Oh, the cat makes three. He's pretty special. He's an Abyssinian. Oh, what's that? Oh, they're gorgeous. Looks like a Siamese with blue, blue eyes and a lovely gray coat. Like the gray in, oh, in Chinchilla. Only shorter. His name is Smokey. Come on, Jane. He rustled the bustle. A chariot's waiting. Oh, wait a minute. I need the phone number. Uh, Jane, take a couple of the shopping bags out, will you, honey, while I write it down for Andy? Sure. Only how did you get the number? I, I forgot all about it. Yeah, I took it off the bedroom phone. Oh, let me see. Uh, three, one, three, one, three, one, three. Oh, my, that's a terrible number. Especially after apartment 13D. Janie doesn't know it yet. I want to break it to her slowly. Oh, <laughs> you superstitious people. Oh, I got a twinge in my shoulder blade now like I was bit by a horse. Who was bit by a horse? No one, dear. Come on, grab the rest of this gear before our impatient hacky runs out on us. Uh, come on, be right out. Oh, Jane, I'm going to miss you. Oh, me too. So will Joel. What the heck? It's not the last time we'll be seeing each other. Don't forget, we're having dinner Thursday night at the New Dig. Oh, that reminds me. Just in case I forget the address, can I have your copy of the newspaper? Uh, yeah, well, oh, no, I left it downtown. Oh. Uh, don't worry, I, I picked you up a fresh copy. The ad is on page 37, column 5, a first one in furnished apartments. Uh -huh. Now, look, this really is goodbye. Let's go. Now, I'll worry about you. Promise me to call as yeah. soon as you're settled. Okay. Oh, it might be almost midnight. Oh, Come my. on. Now, that's the last call. It sounds like the Trump of doom. Oh, right. goodbye, John. Goodbye, Anchor. Hey, we'll yeah. call you. Don't right. worry. All right, dear. Oh, oh I better get that address written down before I forget. Now, let's see. Page 37. Column 5. Oh, furnished apartments. Here, here we are. Oh, that's very strange. The, the ad isn't in this paper. There's no ad at all. <laughs> Well, he didn't answer downstairs, and we have to let ourselves into the building. Maybe he's off getting old Smoky. Well, then I guess we should just use our keys and go right in. Well, that's what we paid the rent for. Uh, you want the honor? Oh, no, I'm terrified to let go of this bag with the eggs in it. You open the lock. Okay, here goes. Uh, well, I guess we need the bottom one, too. Uh, yeah. Mr. Apollyon? You try, you're louder. Uh, uh, Mr. Apollyon? Oh, look. It must be Smokey. Hey, Smokey boy. Oh, isn't he cute? Rubbing himself against your leg, just as if he'd known you all your yeah. life. But where's Apollyon? Hey, you don't suppose that he's... Look at Smokey. He's backing off as if he was inviting you to come in. Uh, look, leave the rest of the gear here. You dump that stuff in the kitchen while I look through the rest of the house. Yeah, Jane, what is it? There's a note on the refrigerator door explaining everything. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, what happened? Darling, you know the oil shortage. They canceled the plane he was to leave on because of too few reservations, but offered him a seat on an earlier plane. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a relief. Yeah. What are you getting all head up about? I don't know, Jane. I just had a kind of nutty feeling. I don't know what to call it. A death, I guess. I... I honestly thought I was going to find that nice old man lying somewhere with, with a heart attack or something. <laughs> yeah, I feel silly enough as it is. Now Smokey's laughing at me. Not him. It's explained on the very detailed note on the fridge. It's Smokey's din din time. Oh. He's hungry. Look what he gets. Ugh, looks like raw flesh. Well, whatever it is, you can see he loves it. That cat is losing its attraction for me. Oh, don't be a goon. Look how crazy you are for steak tartare. Well, that's different. You give him some mouthwash after he's through. 
Where are you going? I'm going to bring the rest of our stuff in. Great. Just dump it in the bedroom. I'll sort it out later. That was a wonderful dinner. Oh, ought to be. Took long enough. What time is it? Uh, gee, I don't believe it. It's just midnight. Oh, it's been a long, glorious, wonderful, relaxing... What's that? I don't know. <laughs> Joel, that was a shock. Oh, don't be silly. <laughs> she walked out on him and shut the door. She? Or he, someone. Didn't old HSM give us a rundown on our neighbors? Let's see. According to the bulletin he left on the fridge door, upstairs, no problem. A very ancient hermit who winters in Florida and seems to estivate in summer? What's that mean? Oh, advantages of a classical education. If you sleep through the winter, you hibernate. If you sleep through the summer, you estivate from the Latin estivare. Well, I thought the Greeks always had a word for it. No, I'm pulling your leg. I have the faintest idea what it is. What's the poop on our other cliff dwellers? Uh, let's see. A, across the hall is a widow who just left on a round-the-world cruise. B, next door is a couple of swingers who never seem to be home at the same time. Yeah. And next door are two young kids he thinks we'll like who go to the movies and theater a lot. Okay, I'll blame the noise we heard on the swingers. Let's hope that's their last contribution for tonight. Well, we're forgetting the dishes tonight. Oh, good. We're going to bed and pull the covers over our heads. It mightn't be a bad idea. Okay, let's go. Well, what are we standing here for? You're not just standing. I have my arms around you, and I'm loving you, and I'm wondering if maybe I was just the most trusting, gullible dum-dum in the world, and maybe you should fetch me a smart karate chop to the left temple. What are you talking about, my darling idiot? I'm just wishing your darling idiot hadn't taken all our dough and paid it out in cash for security and the first month's rent. How's the bed? Like floating on air. Then look a little happier. I'm just remembering I forgot to call Aunt Gertrude. Well, you can't call her now. It's after one o'clock. Hey, where are my pajamas? In the old beat-up case on top. Toilet stuff, too. Oh, but before you do that, could you do me a favor? Sure. I forgot my calcium pill. It's with all the vitamins in the kitchen. Okay, I'll be right back. Oh, Lord. Please don't let me have made a terrible mistake. I loved this apartment so at first, but now... I... Joel? Who? Who's that? No. Please. Oh! Oh, Smokey. Oh, what a start you gave me jumping on a bed like that. Oh, you mad at me. Why are you looking at me like that? Did I forget to say goodnight? What is it? You want me to come somewhere? Oh, maybe I should have given you some milk. All right. We'll take care of it. No, the kitchen's that way. Not... Where is it you want to go? Joel, come here. I'll be right there. What is it, honey? Smokey, look at him. He came and got me and led me here. He seems desperate to get into this closet. And that's the one Apollyon has all his little ghoulish treasures tucked away in. We couldn't open it anyway. It's, it's locked. Try it, just in case. Oh, there may be something of Smokey's that got locked in there by accident. Okay, here goes. Oh. Oh, how terrible. How terrible. And vicious. And unspeakable. And vile. Oh, no wonder that man. Oh, Joel, close it up. Oh, just shut away that horror. Oh, for God's sake, take me to bed and help me forget I ever saw it. Okay, honey, uh, what, what about Smokey? Whatever it was, he found it and ran. Close that door up. Shut it. I wish I could think I'll ever be able to shut it out of my mind. No wonder I thought this was all too good to be true. Good to be true? Better to interpolate and make it read, Too true to be good. Poor Jane and Joel. But how were such simple, ordinary people to know the language of black magic? Or that H.S.M. Mapollion is only a synonym for the more familiar and deadly spirit we usually call the devil? 
I'll be back shortly with Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago. The Chicago Fire won tonight here at Soldier Field, beating Jacksonville 25 to 22. A short and classic definition of tragedy is the downfall of a noble person whose character is flawed by a single weakness which causes him to break a moral law which leads to his destruction. But how much more tragic is the destruction of the innocent, particularly when they happen to cross the path of someone who makes their disaster equally inevitable? Which brings us back to Joel and Jane Trent. Jane? Yes, darling? You stopped shaking. You think you can sleep now? I'm sorry I was so... so childish before. I think it's because I'm carrying one. <laughs> no, you aren't childish. I'm just the same. I've, I got the willies, too. I guess it's just because it's all so strange to us. I think so, too. Well, let's get a good night's sleep, like everyone else has had. Good Lord, what was that? I don't know. It's from upstairs. It must be the old man. What's happened to him? I don't know. Just pay it no attention. Pay it no attention? No one could sleep with that noise going on. I'm going to go up and tell him to stop. Oh, no, please. Don't do that. Please don't go up there. Well, why not? Are you going to be ill? No, it... It's that up there. You mean our noisy neighbor. I'm... I'm scared, Joe. Yeah. I've had about all I can take, and that noise is really driving me up the wall. Yeah, me too. I, I know what I'll do. I'll call the superintendent. Uh, got his number on the sheet? No. Uh, Wouldn't you know it's the one thing he left off? It's just his apartment number, 1A. Oh, yeah. Look, I'll take a run down in the elevator and get him to come back up and see what's going on up there. Will you be all right alone? Yes. No. Oh, Joel, I don't know what's the matter with me. I'm not usually like this. I don't know what's got into me. I do. What? My son and heir. Oh, you male chauvinist. Just because she's carrying a baby doesn't mean a woman has to act like one. I'm sorry. I know. I mean, look, I'll tell you what. I'll just take the elevator up there and I'll find out what's going on myself. Oh, no, you don't. You don't know what you'd be getting into. Go get the super. His name is Bill Josephs. Oh. 1A. All right. Okay. I gotta stop that somehow. Oh, well, here's your protector standing guard by the door. Go on in, Smokey. Keep Mrs. Trent company. I'll be right back. racket up there doesn't turn you a hair, Smokey. <coughs> then you're a male cat, so I suppose that makes us totally different breeds. Joel? Yeah, Jane, it's just me. Would you believe it? That damn elevator's out of order. I rang and rang. It just stays in the first floor. That damn racket's still going on. Yep. Only one it doesn't bother is old Smokey here. Joel, are there fire stairs? Yeah, but I'm not going down any 13 flights just to find a locked door. All the doors, even ours, have a safety lock on them. What are we going to do? Well, first off, I'm going upstairs to tell Barnacle Bill, or whatever his name is... Uh, uh, uh it's uh, Nemo. Oh, like, like Captain Nemo in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? I guess. Okay, I'm going to tell Nemo to up anchor and get out of range. Joel, don't get into any fights. With a guy old enough to be my great-grandfather? Yeah, it's okay. It's me, Jane. Half a sec. Joel? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. Well, what did he say when you got him to open the door? What was he doing? I... I don't know. He didn't open the door. Why? Look, I... I don't know how to tell you this, Jane... Well, just tell me anyway, but tell me. What is it? Well, I, I took some newspaper with me to wedge a door so I wouldn't get trapped. I fixed ours. Then when I got to the top of the stairs, it was a different kind of door. Well, what do you mean, different? Well, it was, you know, one of those heavy steel fire doors with a big heavy strap bars that you slide home. Well, why would 14 have a different kind of door from ours? Because... Well, look, Jane, darling, maybe I, I just try to try to skip the... Well, you better not, or I don't know what might happen to... Well, all right, all right, take it easy. Just hang on, because I'm going to have to give you a real rocker. Let me have it. It's a different kind of door, 
because there isn't any 14th floor at all, or 15th, or 20. All that's over us is the roof. Are you all right now, dear? What's that you've been giving me? Oh, Brandy, I had a good jolt myself. The sound, it's still there. That's right. What causes it? Something loose up there on the roof? No, I searched it thoroughly. It, it's not coming from the roof. Well, then where? The neighbors? I checked that out. Whatever other lies Mr. Apollyon told us, there isn't anyone in any of the apartments on this floor. I've done everything but break down the doors to make sure. Well, then what are we going to do? I, I can't take this all night, Joel. Nobody could. I am going to call the police. I don't know what we've gotten ourselves into, but we are now getting out. Oh, I'm afraid it's a little too late for that, Mr. Trent. Apollyon, where the devil are you? Sitting right in front of you, in his other form. Smokey. I should have known from the beginning, from his eyes. Shine a strong light in a cat's eyes, and what happens? The pupil closes up. Into a long, narrow slit. But in a human being... It closes into a tight, round, dark circle. Like Mr. Smokey. Look as the lamp shines in his eyes. Yes, very observant, Jane. I should have been more careful. But since the illusion serves no function anymore... I might as well resume my Father Christmas sky, isn't it? Normally, I wouldn't have had to return to it except for you. Why not? Oh, people act in so many strange degrees. Some just go to sleep no matter how strange the noise is. Some trap themselves between floors. Some very hysterical ones try to leap from roof to roof. Some break through the neighbor's doors and meet quite unexpected deaths since there's nothing but space beyond them. And some sit awake all night not realizing that morning will never come again. And some are... Uh, a little troublesome. But none escape? Well, it wouldn't be very good for my reputation, would it? Who are you? Oh, Jane, you tease me about my classical education. Little good it served me. Apollyon, of course. A synonym for the devil. And the HSM? His satanic majesty, I presume? We all have our little conceits. Well, this time... Maybe we can take that conceit down a peg or two. Well, not with the phone. It's not connected. As a matter of fact, it doesn't really exist. Huh? Listen. Now what? Well, if you will forgive the devil quoting scripture, or to be more exact, the book of uh, common prayer, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. You'd kill us? Oh, my dear, as attractive as they are, I have no interest in your corporeal presences. The soul is all I'm after. Well, you won't get ours without a fight. <laughs> oh! There was no pain, my dear. You killed him. But you won't get me. Jane, oh! it's too late. The contract is made. The elevator. The elevator. <laughs> no, don't step in there. The car is... <laughs> Now, why didn't she wait for me to tell her the car was still on the first floor? Poor, crushed little sparrow. But what matter the bodies live and die in, in the blink of time's eyelid? The soul is what lives forever. No time to waste philosophizing. Tomorrow is another equally busy day. A quick general cleanup, and then the ad must be sneaked into that one right paper so the Smithers will get it. <laughs> I wonder what the New York Chronicle would have to say if they knew that they had a real printer's devil. Yes, 
Oh, look, my name is Gertrude Conway, and, and my niece and her husband are renting Mr. Apollyon's apartment. Now, I've been trying to call them ever since last lady, night, and lady, I, just a I have now, now not just, only been uh, informed by the telephone company that there is no such number, but that there could be no such number. Also, Jane, my niece, she promised to call me if I didn't call her, and yes. even if she thought last night was too late, she would have called this morning. Yes. You see, she's going to have a baby. Oh, well, then, maybe she went to a hospital. In the middle of her second trimester... Huh? The baby is less than five months old. Oh. Still, you it know, doesn't she matter might anyway. Be. Now, I've checked with all the hospitals, and she has not been admitted. Now, I'm worried something may have happened. I, I want you, please, to, to take me up to the apartment with the keys. Oh, what apartment? Mr. H.S.M. Apollyon, who sublet it to them. Lady, we ain't got no Mr. Apollyon on it, or whatever his name is in this building. Oh, certainly you have. This is 27 Southwest 62nd Street, isn't it? Sure, that's right. Oh, very well. It's apartment 13D. 13D? That's right. Well, that solves the whole problem. Oh, good. There ain't no apartment 13D in this building. What? Point of fact, lady, there ain't no 13th floor. You know, like most New York buildings. We go from 12 to 14 and then right off up to, 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 to 30. Are you sure? Look, I've been running this building for 22 years. Oh, my God. I have this terrible feeling there's something awfully wrong. Nothing unusual happened around this building last night or in the neighborhood. No, no, quiet as a church, ma'am. Not even a mugging. And believe me, I get all the word when Officer Strauss drops in for his morning coffee. But two healthy young people can't just disappear into thin air. George? Uh, 13. Good thing we ain't either of us superstitious, huh? Yeah, not at this rent. Look out for the catch, huh? Don't worry. You just trust me. Aha! I thought I heard the lift. Uh, my Anglican background, I should really say English, actually. Elevator, I meant, of course. Are you here to see the flat? Uh, uh, apartment, I mean. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm George Smithers, and... Uh, this is my wife, Violet. Ah, H.S.M. Apollyon here. Everyone always thinks I'm Navy, but I'm not. It isn't H.M.S., you see. H.S.M. stands for something quite different. Oh, yeah. Well, do come along in. I'm sure you're dying to see the apartment, and I... I can promise you... I won't disappoint you. Two more sacrificial lambs to the slaughter. Their doom, of course, is sealed. But, as Mr. Joseph says, so many people disappear in a big city every day. Not quite in this way, of course. But I suppose you can never be too careful. The sad trouble is that, as Elizabeth Barrett Browning said, the devil is most devilish when respectable. I'll be back shortly. Caveat emptor, the Latin phrase which says, let the buyer beware. This is true of all advertisements, of course. And the tighter the economy gets, the more the buyer should beware. But we wouldn't want to suggest you need fear the kind of ad we have featured tonight. In the beginning, we promised you a spine-tingling ghost story, which featured the two phrases, too good to be true... And too true to be good. As a good night, we just like to suggest it was all in fun. And even if it wasn't true, we hope you found it good. Our cast included Jada Rowland, Paul Hecht, Ian Martin, and Bryna Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. We've been married for 20 yes, years, yes. happily married. But, you can't throw years away like old shoes. Destroy everything we've built together. Everything we've come to mean to each other. I'm powerless to do anything else. Well, I am not. What do you mean? I mean that you're suffering from some sort of... some sort of aberration. You're sick, Norman. Mentally sick. 
And I am not letting you do anything as stupid, as disastrous as marrying that girl. I will not divorce you, Norman. Agnes. No, Norman. In a few months, it'll all be over. This sudden romance of yours will be dead. Stone cold dead. No. In a few months, I will be stone cold dead. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. This is WBBM Chicago, News Radio 78. 23 minutes after 11 o'clock is our time. Weather Command says warm tonight.